Good morning, and welcome to the June 25th Kittle Hills Board of Commissioners meeting. If you would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Before we move on to our agenda, if you would join us for a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Okay, first up is the approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signal by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Okay, good morning. This is the first time that set aside for public comment this morning. We did have a sign up sheet. I believe Lois, you signed up. So, um, Ms. Lois Nems will go first. And when you approach the podium, if you'll just identify yourself by name and address. And then once we call from those on the list, then we'll ask anyone that's here in the audience that wishes to speak. Um, we'll give them the opportunity. If you're speaking um, as an individual, if you would please try to limit your comments to three minutes. Uh, we do have now a timer that we've established over in the, um, I don't know if it's going to be on your side, if it's still the right-hand side of the screen. But anyway, if you're speaking as an individual, we ask that you limit your comments to three minutes. If you're speaking on behalf of a group, we ask you to limit your comments to five minutes, please. So good morning, Lois. Welcome. Good morning, Lois Nelms, 3101 Lee Avenue in Kill Devil Hills. Uh, thank you to everyone who serve in our community. Um, well, I appreciate it. Uh, I want to start that way because, uh, oh, and the other thing I want to say is thank you for the road improvements around our home. Uh, they're wonderful. They've worked out really good. Uh, they've uh, been real receptive to come and cut down some trees that were hanging over that uh, weren't originally cut and uh, the roads look great it's it's draining up there really nice so thank you for that I'm really concerned about this 3% tax I would say please don't do it uh, we're looking at a federal uh, increase in gas taxes now we're looking at sand taxes coming you've already raised it three cents and another, I mean, three percent. Another three percent. You're gonna, you're gonna get people like me. You're gonna push us right out of the community. We can't afford to live here. Uh, with gas prices the way they are, food, uh, it's just, it's, it's difficult on a fixed income to live in this community. And I would, I would beg you to rethink that and think past whatever. I, I know that I haven't been keeping up with you. I apologize. I've been kind of busy. And I intend to keep up with all of it at this point from now on. Um, uh, I just don't see another increase. Uh, uh, I think it's separating the masses. You're making the poor poor and the richer rich, richer. And that's how I feel about that. Uh, the other problem, uh, or the other situation, I don't know, it might not be a problem for anyone else, but in my home, uh, immediately beside my home, you allowed my neighbor to put a swimming pool in between my house and his house. Uh, and I, I agree that you should be able to do pretty much what you want on your own property, as long as it doesn't interfere with the peace and tranquility of your neighbors. I've got a pool now that's less than 15 feet from uh, the north side of my house. The, the fence is on the property line, which I'm tickled about because it keeps all of his uh, guests on his side and you know I don't have to worry about uh, the dogs pooping and all that other stuff. But the problem is, is without, with the TV on and the radio on, I still can hear every word that these people are saying and see everything they're doing. So either I got to shut the entire north side of my house down and uh, figure out uh, you know, what I'm gonna do. It's a little late now, it's dropped. When he started putting it in, no, I really feel like you should notify a neighbor if something like that is gonna be installed right next door to you. No one ever told me. I was told a fence was going to be put up, and I was happy to get on board with that. But the next thing I knew, they're digging a hole, then he piles a 20-foot pile of sand up, the sand comes and eats the paint off of my cars, 
It's all up in my house. Sand was blowing. It was a nightmare the last seven months with that swimming pool. Not just for me, but for him as well because of getting people in there to do the job. But now I've got a permanent fixture on the side of my house that is concrete with runoff. The runoff is running into the north side of my house and into my garage. So that means I gotta spend money to have someone come in and put a swell in between his fence and my house to keep the water out of my house. I'm not happy about it at all. Um, I know either I got to live with it or move, but uh, I think in the future that you folks need to really look at something like that and, and consider the peace and tranquility in my house is gone, at least through the summer while they're able to use the pool. So um, that's it for today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lewis. Thank, Thank you. Lewis. Any questions? Come on and sit in my house and try to eat with me and listen to that, that <laughs> all of that going on. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Is there anyone else that would like to speak this morning at public comment? Howard? Welcome. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. My name is Howard Kimball. I live at 8031, 803 West Sportsman Drive in Kill Devil Hills. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and referring to, to one of Mrs. Nelm's comments about she really appreciates the road work and the, and the drainage and stuff that, um, that, that our town has put in to make it better in, in her neighborhood. Well, I think our residents need to realize that all of that stuff costs money. And, and if, we, if we don't continue to, to look after our street budget, stormwater, and those things, we wouldn't get comments like that. They would all be negative. Um, so um, I have actually seen another subject, the sidewalks. I've seen people walking on our new, new sections of our sidewalks. And, and if that's what it takes, if it takes a, a two or three cents to, uh, to continue getting some projects done in Kill Devil Hills, then I fully support that. And I hope that this board will support the um, the three cent increase. Thank you. Thank you, Howard. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else this morning that would like to speak? Yes. <clears throat> How y'all doing? I'm Skip Jones, fifteen oh eight Captain's Lane, and um, I was a big proponent on the sidewalks and a bypass, and I think it's a huge plus. They did a great job. Um, and it is being used. Um, you've seen a lot more bicycles, walkers, all that. Um, it looks great. It's working great. Um, I would hope that we would continue. I know there's a stretch. Probably one of the only stretches left is between First Flight and the food line, which is a really very well used area because of all the people. And especially, I think, in the summertime, we get a lot of the um, kids from over in Europe staying in First Flight, and they're always going to the food line, the shopping center and stuff there. And, um, I was talking to Steve, and I think it might possibly might be a little bit more expensive <coughs> area because of curb and guttering and drainage and whatnot. But I think it's it's not a great deal, and it's I think it'd be something to really look at for the coming budget. I know that's part of it on here, and I'll just say that I appreciate what's been done. I think it's great, and um, hopefully we'll can hopefully continue that one stretch that's missing. As far as I know, that's the biggest stretch that's missing. That would be pretty important to. to follow through with so okay. thank you thank you Skip. thanks thanks is there anyone else this morning that would like to speak at this first public comment session <coughs> okay um, we'll move on to response to public comment then um, thank the three of you for coming out this morning and speaking at the meeting um, <clears throat> first we'll um, so we don't have any comments to address Lois's comments Um, let us, we will talk a little bit about the, the budget. Obviously, you see it's on the agenda this, this morning. Um, so I think we'll talk a little bit more about that at that point with, with the concern you had there. Um, as, as far as the neighbors, um, I can understand 
it's a change now, and, and it certainly can be uncomfortable if they're loud. And you know, the, the only things that we have within our parameters to, to really do anything with that is if they're violating our noise ordinance, um, which we did put in effect last year, the year before, we, well, um, we put more teeth in it so it actually can be measurable. We have a decibel reading, and the police now have, they have the meters to measure that. If they're violating that, and there are time specific, and, and we can get you a copy of that, then, then that's worthy of a call because we do have some enforcement that we can put in place with that. Um, if it's you know in the middle of the day, that's it, there's nothing that really can be done there. And as far as how people can use their, their personal property, we can only enforce what the um, ordinances are that are on the books. And so obviously if they put that pool in with the proper permits and all they were doing it within what we allow within our town. That being said, if there are issues with drain off that you're seeing and water running in your garage, um, I do think that's probably something that we can look at and just to make sure that there's not an issue with what they've done. Um, is that fair, staff, that we could look at that just to make sure that's not? We can, we can look at the situation and, and work with this now to see what, what's possible. Okay. If everything's legal and they've done everything by the book, then I don't know what's in our parameters, but certainly we can go out and check that and see if that's the case. Right. So, any other? Yeah, I think that's great. I, I think that's yes. Okay. Fair. Um, Howard, thank you for your comments. Mm -hmm. They're right on line with the challenges that we face with the budget. And, and Skip, um, that is also, appreciate your comments. And um, Cybox is something that just at the budget workshop we held last week that we looked at, you know, how to start putting that in the budget to make it not only um, continue the work that we're doing, but create a long-term plan for the town. So we'll discuss that a little bit more in a few moments as well. So thank you. Anyone else have anything to? Yeah, I just want to thank everybody for their comments. And I think it's, um, it's, it's kind of, it's interesting that you get two sides to the tax issue and there are two sides and I understand both of them. I've been on one side at one time and one side at another, not on this budget, but I mean in the past, but uh, it's very well said, Howard, that you, you see what's going on and you understand that we, we can't do that without some funds. And we're, now we're trying to catch up from some of the more bad times in addition to trying to keep up with some projects that we would like to do. Uh, for me personally, a three cent uh, increase uh, doesn't amount to much based on the value of my property. But I know there's other people that what might be a couple lattes to me <laughs> might be uh, a hardship for somebody else. I understand that. Uh, and people may be not being able to live here because of the taxes. Uh, I wouldn't want to see that. I don't know if it ever get to that point because I don't think it's uh, a drastic increase that would drive people away. But people might not want to live here if we don't do the things we need to do and protect them and keep the roads nice and and um, and obviously the things that people are very pleased about now that we're doing with fireworks are coming back and we're, we're going to be doing a beach nourishment and that costs money um, and the sidewalks and there's other visible projects that people see and uh, that's why I'm in support of what we're doing this budget cycle now, it may be different other years if I'm still here at some point but I, I appreciate everybody's comments and I appreciate understanding that it's something that we if we want to do these things we need to pay for them so thanks <laughs> and and I'll reiterate what what Mike had, what Commissioner Hogan has said. Um, I, I know I'm a lot of times on the side of let's not spend a lot of money, and I know I've voted voted as so in in many cases. And um, I work with a population that's very vulnerable, as Miss Nelm said, to to the the increases in in taxes, and and we are facing a lot of that, and we're being hit from every side with this. But with this particular budget, what I see is that in order for us to continue the level of services that we have now and in order for us to continue doing what we've talked about doing with the sidewalks and for us to continue to keep the wonderful employees that we have there's a cost for that and and so we have a responsibility as as your elected officials here to look at every angle of that and we have to weigh the pros and the cons with that and that's not always an easy job 
And, and so that's, that's why I'm in support of this, because I, th I think it is, there's a fine line with that. And, and sometimes, sometimes you have to say yes, and sometimes you have to say no. But in looking at this, I don't, I don't see anything extravagant in this budget. I, I think that the, I think, I think that the town manager and the department heads have done a really good job of looking at what they, they really, really need in order to make this town run efficiently. I think, I think you do a great job at what you do. And, and I think the citizens are seeing the effects of that. I think, I think also what's happened is I think we're still playing catch up from what's happened in the past. I think, I think we're seeing that with some of the cars. I think we're seeing that with, with some of the, um, a software equipment and some of the things that have been put off and when you put things off it just takes a little while to catch up I think if we continue to do what we're doing now it, it will reach a point where it levels off just a little bit and we won't have to be hit with such increases so at least that's what I'm hoping and and by that time I think we're all hoping and praying that the economy will be better I don't think we'll ever see those days that we have in the past where, where it was really 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 great but but I'm hoping that things will level off and we won't have to continue to raise taxes to get it back to where it was I think once we get to that point and I think we're very close so I, I, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel as I hope a lot a lot of my fellow board members up here can as well so I, I, I hope y'all know that we're not just doing this willy-nilly and it's not that we just want to raise taxes and I, I think I'm preaching to the choir here most of y'all as I'm looking at you understand what's going on here but I just want the public who's going to see this later to know that I'm, I'm not jumping ship on this, and, and I know I'm the one that usually um, votes in, the, in a more conservative manner, but there, there was a lot of thought put into this. This, this was not just done haphazardly. Thanks. Sorry. Okay. Um, if you guys don't mind, we really have kind of already jumped into um, <clears throat> new business item number one, um, which is fun. It carried from public comment on to our comments on the budget. So we'll just continue the discussion, but now in light of um, item number one, which is the budget ordinance for the fiscal year 2014-2015. Um, and just a, a background for either those of you watching this or in the audience, that this original budget was um, presented on May 12th. Then we held two budget work sessions. We also held um, the public hearing on the budget we had one speaker at the public hearing um, and then as of this morning we had basically two speakers maybe a third that was talking about budget but um, other than that I didn't receive any other mm -hmm. comments um, on the budget from our citizens um, basically from what was presented to us back on May 12th and what the outcome of the two budget workshops were that um, the variances or the difference from what was presented is this current budget before us that we um, have to adopt includes um, funding the 4th of July fireworks so $20,000 was added to do that um, I will say <clears throat> the goal is that we would not need to spend 20000 on those fireworks we've been fortunate this year for our fireworks celebration to have um, funding from the tourism board and certainly we would be requesting funding again for next year um, but since we don't know going into it that that's a guarantee you budget for it and then hopefully we just don't have to spend that amount um, the other difference is this budget now that's before us um, includes establishing a capital reserve fund for sidewalks and multi-path construction um, it funds that at $100,000 for this year so hopefully we can continue some of the bypass sidewalk work but the other thing that it does is, is then establishes this as a set fund with an expectation that we would try to fund this at the value of $1,000 each year, $100,000 <coughs> each year. So then we are building up a fund much like we have done with the sidewalk um, improvement, or excuse me, the street improvement fund, um, because we still have a lot of other sidewalk projects. You know, we, we need to look at finishing Bay Drive. There's no funding currently anywhere for that. Um, but this fund would help establish that, and then um, we would be able to make decisions on how we're going to, to, you know, which projects we're going to focus on. The other thing that changed in this budget was, and this was not additional money that was added, but um, we moved, or money was moved um, from um, marketing into the um, special events line item to cover the ice cream social 
you remember, that's a community event that we brought back this past year that was incredibly successful. Um, maybe a couple hundred of our citizens were out there enjoying that event. Um, and you know, it's just a, a nice thing to do for the community that I think afterwards we all felt was something worth continuing. Again, that wasn't new money. We actually shifted money from one line item to another um, to be able to fund that. So, um, so basically that's kind of just an overview of where we are now with, with the budget that's before us um, to consider adopting. And with that, we'll continue the discussion or comments um, on the heels of what Mayor Pritchum and Commissioner Rebottom shared. So, Michael, do you have any comments? And Travis? Comments? No. Um, my, my only concern is I, I see I certainly see the value of the budget that's in front of us um, of being able to continue some of the work that we've got going and, and in order to also be able to catch up my main concern is not necessarily the increase from just this possible tax increase but the increase of other tax increases that are coming across the board um, has been mentioned already um, several things are going up for everyone this year whether it's homeowners insurance flood insurance um, and the fuel tax that's been mentioned already um, i think we just need to be mindful of those that are on a fixed income and are could potentially feel the pinch of even something as low as 50 or 60 dollars for a fiscal year Um, <clears throat> and only additional comments that, that I wish to add. Um, you know, I, I think even though who, those who have already spoken out um, in support, and, and I do support where this budget is now, um, and I appreciate all the work that the staff has done to, to prepare this budget for us, the support of the budget is, is certainly not to diminish the fact that, that it, it will make, you know, it, there's, the likelihood that it could have, um, it could create a tough time for some people with, with any tax increase. Um, and that there are multiple, you know, multiple avenues that they're being hit with increases. Um, as a town, we're not immune to those either. So, you know, when you feel something hitting your personal pocket pocketbook or your family household pocketbook, um, you have to believe and understand that that same thing is hitting businesses, it's hitting government, it's hitting industries. None of us are immune from that. Um, and because we have tried to shelter over the past um, really six to seven years, the, the previous board and then we followed suit, um, some of us when we first came in, trying to shelter the citizenry from tax increases to help them get through the really tough economic times it's put us in a position where we've still had our expenses going up and we haven't been doing some of the, the we haven't been doing some of the upgrade and maintenance and items that we need to and it's really put us in a position to do to need to do a three cent increase um, I'm with Brandy in that I hope that and don't expect that that would be for general town operations and what we need to do to support uh, the future of our town I don't see that being necessary for operations that being said, um, you know, it would be foolish to also not mention that we are looking at, and, and we've been forthright, that we will have to have some type of tax increase to be able to fund beach nourishment. Um, we don't know yet what that's going to look like. We don't know exactly how we're going to administer that. We've identified um, that there's the likelihood of establishing special, de special districts, so those on the ocean front would carry the, you know, kind of the heavier burden of that that tax increase but that's the really tough work and important work that that we're going to be tasked with over the next year to do um, so you know not not to be too long-winded but I think it's just important um, that our citizens know that at least from um, my analysis of the budget and looking at you know what's best for the long term of our town in light of what we need to do and what we all need to contribute that um, this budget does that it establishes I've already talked about with the sidewalk fund which is something that we have heard and heard so many times is important it gets um, our vehicles where it needs to do it helps us get a safer work environment um, in our garage so we then can continue to take 
care of, of what we have. So um, <clears throat> I support it, and I will continue, though, to, to be mindful of what tax increases do, as, as you all are as well, um, to our citizenry. So. One other thing I'd like to add, and, I, and I'm not sure that we've mentioned this at all, and maybe any of these workshops, or maybe we have, and I just can't remember it, and, and, and it's that that awful thing that we always talk about, the, the cost-sharing um, allocations that, that happen within the municipalities and the county when we do this. And, and I'm an accounting person, and sometimes I can't wrap my head around this. So it, it is important to note that, that with this three-cent increase, it, it puts us on the better side of that than it does if we don't do anything at all. So and I'm sure Beverly can probably do a much better job of explaining that for us, but it, it, it really does. Some of that will be offset. That, that three-cent will be offset just, just a slight bit with some of the other towns not doing an increase and with the county not doing an increase it'll it'll put us in a little better shape with that even though I, I know that's not a whole lot of um, encouragement for some of those that are that are vastly opposed to this but but that is something to keep just in the back of your mind with that and it's not it's not something that I'm 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 vastly opposed to the way it's done but I don't see it ever changing just because of the it's just the way it's always been done I guess and one, one final comment that, that I'd like to make, because it's not only for this year, but for future years. Um, when, a, when a tax increase is proposed and all the line items in the budget are created, and you basically, you know, we have to present a balanced budget, um, to, to say we're not going to do a specific tax increase or that we want to not do, so, you know, we looked at possibly what would happen if we tried to do a two cent tax increase instead of the three cent, or what if we did a one and a half cent or three cent. Um, I think it's really important, if, if people aren't conceptualizing that, that, that this way, if you do say that, that, you know, once, that we wanna do something different than what we're doing, that's fine, but we also then need to say, okay, what are we cutting? Because you can't just say, let's not do this tax increase without then looking at the line item and saying, what are we not going to spend? And um, a one cent tax increase in the town of Kittlewa Hills based on our property values and, and um, so and for, so forth is about $190,000. Um, so I, I put that out there. So in, you know, in future years, if we do have citizens that um, want to, you know, this is all public information, look harder at budget line items than, you know, with us. Um, that's why we do have the, the budget workshops, um, and that's why we are available, and, and certainly staff are, are available and, and really good at what they do. Um, it takes making a very tough decision to say, okay, let's, let's only raise it two cents instead of three cents. Well, then let's find, we would have to find at least $190,000 to remove from that budget, or you're borrowing from fund balance and, and putting fund balance. Well, you don't want to do that because that really affects... If we have any type of catastrophic issue in our town and we have a bad storm, we sometimes rely on that fund balance to carry us through. And so, it's um, I, I, again, I throw that out there just so it's, um, you use the, the comment, not making willy-nilly decisions. And, and these aren't willy-nilly decisions, but they're also, it's really a lot easier to say, let's not do that tax increase, than it is to say the reality of, okay, then sit down and let's find out where you're trimming 190 or, you know, 380 whatever you want to trim from a budget um, so it, it's more of um, a call to be engaged with us and if you do think that you have ideas as a citizen on ways to do that please come share them with us that really is why we do the the, the information sessions that we do so, okay um, anyone else have any comments suggestions no I just want to say uh, Brandy it was reminded us all of the, the shared revenue which is uh, We've talked about it so much in the past. The formula for doing that is uh, kind of convoluted, and it rewards people for raising their taxes. It, they get more of the shared revenue, and not really the way it should be done, but like I said, it's not going to change. But in this case, it's going to help us a little bit, and it may, uh, depending on what it actually ends up, it may cancel out some of this, uh, this raise that we're doing by getting the funds uh, from the county. Um, at this point, if there's no further discussion, a motion would be in order. 
I'd like to make a motion that we adopt the 2014-15 operating budget ordinance number 14-11 as presented. I'll second. Any other discussion or comments? All those in favor, please signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you all. The next item under new business is um, item number B, the capital reserve ordinance for the purpose of the construction of sidewalks and multi-use paths in the town. Um, now that the budget is adopted, one of the items in the budget that we just approved was the establishment of, um, or was funding for this fund that, that now we can establish um, this capital reserve fund. Two things in this. Um, so the budget's now allocated the hundred thousand um, dollars. As I mentioned, this is now for um, sidewalks and multi-use paths throughout the town. And um, basically, there, there's a couple of things we need to figure out. Um, kind of how how this is going to be administered. Um, if you recall, with this most recent bypass sidewalk project, we just asked staff to bring us the information. They did incredibly timely. The engineer, Pete, brought us the plans. We just basically from the bench made that decision um, and um, approved this, the funding to do that. We can do that in the future with, with this funding or we also could put it in committee. Um, and there's probably pros and cons with doing, with doing both. Um, when it came through here, it was probably quicker process, shorter timeline by doing so, but you also then don't have all the extra minds and input that you do when you're sending it through a committee. Plus, looking more long term, your committees are established to do that. Um, <clears throat> what I would like to, to recommend to you guys to consider, um, I've had discussion um, with Debbie, and we don't, in my opinion, <clears throat> we don't want to miss another opportunity to look at some matching funding from the tourism board, <coughs> excuse me, for um, <clears throat> assisting with our sidewalks. And that grant cycle <clears throat> is in August. Um, and so, thank you, <laughs> throat lozenger. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to get through this. So to do that, we, all, we, we really wouldn't have the time to send everything through committee and to give staff the time to prepare a grant to submit to the tourism board. Um, but that funding would not be until fiscal year 15, 16, because it's basically you're applying for a whole year out. So if we missed it, then we're two years out, potentially, for having that funding. So here's what I'd like to consider, or like you all to consider, is that we actually make the decision at this level for the next project to be continuing the bypass sidewalks and then have staff go ahead with that direction and um, apply for the grant that, that on behalf of the town in August but then for all future sidewalk projects so when you're looking at everything else that needs to happen for the town my suggestion would be that we actually have this under the um, street improvement committee so that way we can take advantage of the moving forward as, as we need to for August, but yet looking at big picture long term for all the necessary improvements in the town that we place it in committee. <coughs> it's catching, isn't it? <laughs> um, does anyone have any comments or thoughts on that? I think it's a good idea. Yeah. yeah, yeah Howard, I'd... you've been involved in that a lot. Do you think that's, <coughs> that's something we should take care of? Yeah. Yep. That's something we can look at. Yeah. Because we have the committee already put up and people on there are familiar with these kind of projects. We can help out the staff and the board by taking care of it in committee, like Sheila said. And this, I mean, I've, I've kind of put this discussion under this item, even though, I mean, what we really need to approve is establishing this capital reserve ordinance to basically establish um, the, the fund but along with that I figured it was just appropriate to talk about how we're going to operationalize that and so mm -hmm. what we really would be approving is this but what we would do alongside that the reason I brought the other up is that we would also at that point be able to give the staff the direction on how to administer this. Mm -hmm. 
And I do agree that it's smart to go ahead and do the, the, the bypass sidewalks now so because we don't want to lose that funding. And, and, and if the funding cycle for the grants is, is immediate, we, we, want, we need to jump on that. Yeah. So does it the process start in August or need to be submitted by submitted. August? Submitted. Submitted. Yeah. That's yeah. quick. So that's quick. So that's what, yeah, we really just couldn't wait for committee. Right. And we really didn't want to, I didn't want to wait and talk about this at the next meeting because every meeting gives really, them a shorter yeah. amount of time to work on it. So. Do we have to have the specific area defined for the grant? We, no. Yes. And, okay. and we, would, we would come back to the board at the July meeting with additional information. So that can be added in, not necessarily and holding then, you and up. And it would be um, keeping everything in time. I'm not sure when in August. Um, Meredith, do you recall when in August? Third, okay, the end of August. So we, um, the board would have two additional meetings before it would, would be due in. Okay. Yeah, and the project has to be scoped out already. Mm -hmm. <coughs> when, when we apply, right. I think one of the key provisions here is number four. Uh, the word there is strive. <coughs> Uh, we'll strive to appropriate uh, or transfer an amount each year. That gives us um, the option of, of not doing it if, that, if it comes to that, which uh, $100,000 is, is half a cent. We get in a position where uh, things are really tight with the budget. We're doing some other maybe more important things. That gives us the leeway of not doing anything. Or maybe in the future, when times are flush, we can do more. So yeah. that's, right. that's the key there. Yes, sir. Um, there is there is no dollar amount. Right. So right. the hundred thousand is what you're looking at for the upcoming fiscal year. But but this leaves it open ended to um, any amount or none. But the nice thing in establishing this fund, and we talked about this, I think I think we did a little bit at the budget workshop. If not, I know I talked with staff about this was by establishing this fund, um, or by establishing this ordinance, um, this way, regardless of who's seated up here in, in future years, it would always be part of the budget where they would have, and have it in front of them to consider funding it or not. And if you don't, if we didn't do it this way, then it would take a, a pretty much staff you know, saying, don't forget, think about what you want to do with sidewalks. You know, is sidewalks still in your, your master vision? Whereas this will always keep it in front of whoever's seated here to say, okay, you know, this has been a previous a prior commitment by this board to continue this work. And are we going to fund it or not? So I just I think it's just another way to reinforce, hopefully, um, some long-term planning on for the town. I like this, and I think if we ever do reach that point that I talked about before, where where we are, where the economy does pick up and it does reach a point, then then we change this to where a point to where an amount is allocated every year. I, I, I hope we put that in the back of our minds where we don't forget that because I think this is important. If we haven't reached that point where we've got it all done, I'm optimistic. <clears throat> okay. So, if um, any other comments, if not a motion, would be in order. make a motion to accept as presented. Okay, thank you. I'll second that. Any other comments? All those in favor, please signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, next we'll move on to new business item number two. Um, these are recommended amendments to the town code. The first is item A, chapter 51, water services. Section 51.41, Billing Adjustments, and this is to establish a new payment schedule for certain adjusted water bill amounts. Basically, this has to happen every time we adopt a budget because what we just adopted in the budget then needs to be um, put into the, you know, amended in the town code. So that's really all this is, is making that amendment to be consistent with the budget that we just approved. So, but um, Debbie, if you have anything that you wanted to add to that? Um, as you recall, at, at the last meeting, we did have a, a citizen that had a um, horrible leak, um, water leak, that was up under the concrete padding of his home, and um, there was no way for him to know about the leak until the meter was read. Um, what this does is allow for those type of opportunities, um, 
it, it allows the opportunity for those type of situations to give the um, the bill payer a little more time um, to um, to pay that to take care of that adjusted water bill, and and this does require, as the mayor stated, an, an ordinance amendment. And so this would be specifically for anyone that has a thousand dollars or greater. They would get two years yeah. to have it just spread out. <coughs> yes, ma'am. And the and the town attorney has has um, has helped with the staff with um, drawing up a document that they would sign um, to, to help protect the town. Um. In Mr. Grayhex's case, he asked um, for us to consider making it retro for him. How did, did you guys discuss that? How you would do that? You just include in your budget that it would be retro, in, in your motion that it would be retroactive to any outstanding. Okay. Just Should we put a date there? That it doesn't, I mean, do we have any other than Mr. Grayhex? So if we say that, would we? Not, not to our knowledge. Not we haven't had any. Any other requests? Okay, I just was um, so we would know because in doing that we wouldn't have anyone come out from you, you, you a can year. Just, just limit it to existing uh, requests for existing okay. billing or whatever. No, we don't need a date then, right? To include existing, okay. Yeah, um. yeah on the, okay, situations like this, uh, you can see there, but uh, it's up on the screen. Uh, in addition to giving people more time, which I think is a really good idea because his case was really extreme and, and those do pop up once in a while, but we also reduce the bill. We have a, uh, we have a system where when something like that happens, um, we follow a formula and in this case, this bill was reduced to like uh, 2300 down from almost 3800 So in addition to having it reduced then, um, they, yeah, give them more time to pay it. I think it's a good idea. Okay. Any questions or comments? Just curious, how much water is two thousand dollars worth of water? A lot. Oh, <laughs> I forgot it was per packet last time. Yeah. It was it's a lot. many gallons. Yeah, <laughs> it was a crazy it's, amount. It's, yeah. And 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 the you know, the thing about water leaks that a lot of people don't understand is it's not it's not like a gusher. Right. You know, it's just a it's just a slow little it could just be a pinpoint leak, but it adds up, and you know it's it's like like I said, it's under a concrete slab, so it's just going into the sand. And um, it'd be nice if there was some way we could be better if it was a gusher. You know about it. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. If it was a gusher, you know, but that's not how they. It's crazy. Not typically how it happens. Okay, so um, does anyone like to? Make a motion. I'll make a motion <clears throat> that we approve the water service tax amendment for section 51.41 billing adjustments to include the existing request for adjustments. I'll second that. Any other discussion? Those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. And, um, Mr. Grayheck will happily hear from someone. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I'm sure he'll be grateful. Okay. Um, next under uh, recommended amendments is item number B. It's an amendment to Chapter 110, Business Licenses, Section 110.01, .01, Definitions, and 110.16, Who Must Pay Tax to Incorporate New Requirement from the North Carolina General Assembly that most businesses be physically located within a mis municipality to be charged a business license tax. <clears throat> and um, Debbie, do you mind ex providing some information on this? There's Absolutely. been some information in the news. Yes, ma'am. This, um, this all was generated with um, recent changes in the North Carolina General Assembly. They adopted House Bill 1050, <laughs> and it amends um, the statute that covers municipal privilege license taxation. Fortunately for us, um, this did not is not going to have the impact that it is having on some of the um, larger municipalities. It's a tremendous um, revenue source for for some municipalities. We budget, as you may recall, thirty six thousand in revenue. Um, the first the first area that was hit was um, the limit um, it was up to a hundred dollars per um, business that the that the tax would be. And um, I think we calculated that was around 6000 that we would lose 
Um, then the second thing, which is, which is what you're looking at here also, is that an individual would not pay a privilege license tax in a municipality that they may work in but not be established in. And um, it, it, that, that kind of falls in line with someone maybe that's um, like a general contractor, their address may be in Nags Head, but they do work in Kill Double Hills. Before this legislation, the town of Kill Double Hills would also charge them. They would pay a privilege tax in Nags Head, and then they would also pay one in Kill Double Hills. Um, what this legislation does is only allows them to be charged in the town that they're established. So, with that being said, any anyone that w um, any business that we were charging tax that's in Collington, Nags Head, Manny Oak, um, Kitty Hawk, any anywhere else, we were no longer able. Um, to make those charges, and I'm I'm not sure exactly what what that um, has done with the with the projected revenue, um, and and that's um, that that takes a bit of establishing because you know as we've all seen with so many of our folks with Kittleville Hills addresses are in Collington, and even people with Kittleville Hills um, mailing addresses may not have the physical business here, but um, Ron has, has worked very hard on, on getting hopefully getting that um, that billing out correctly. So this is all um, work from our folks in Raleigh. And <clears throat> I know there was, um, y you indicated our hit, and that, that's because we've historically only budgeted 36,000? That, that's, what's, that's what's currently. It's, it, like I said, it's not a huge <coughs> revenue source um, for us. Um, I think where the, where the revenue really gets generated is when you have these large businesses that that have various things and items that you're able to tax. Okay. Um, and there will there will be an additional change um, next <coughs> year. It's, it's almost mm -hmm. going to get to the point that it's um, it's going to be phased out. No we, and we will we will certainly examine the cost benefit to the town um, because at some at some point it's, it's costing you more to. <coughs> to do the to do mm -hmm. the tax and you're generating and, and we'll certainly have a recommendation next year for that. Okay. The, other, the interesting thing is is the the comment was made from the general assembly and the governor that that they will provide um, and I'll use the, the term home heart um, ho harmless um, they will provide some type of revenue to to make good what they're taking away, and I'm, I'm not really sure how that's going to work. I guess you don't tax one thing and tax something else. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll see how that, how that goes. There was an, an, an article in one of our media outlets recently, and I did get a, um, a call from a citizen, so I'm glad <clears throat> that we're talking about this, because the article is focusing on, um, and I don't know what the dollar amount was, and Nag said that they're concerned about how much this will affect their budget, and I think it was, their concern was certainly larger than, than what it's gonna affect ours, and they were um, wondering. Right, I, I, what was what the town manager in Nags had, had proposed, um, since there was the $100 <laughs> cap, he, um, his, his recommended budget had proposed <clears throat> that, that everyone would be 100. Um, they, they had like, for example, they had a general, um, general business license that was $25. Well, our general business license was $50. What they would have proposed was that that general business license be 100, um, which they, they may still have done and they can do. The thing, though, is that any business that does business in Nags Head that's not established in Nags Head, they wouldn't be able to charge anything. <coughs> um, but, but their penny tax increase was to cover that and, and some additional things, not just not just that. It's not that large of a revenue for them either. Okay. Right. Any questions or comments? <laughs> so this really isn't um, this amendment isn't really optional for us <laughs> because it's been it's been yeah, done. It's North Carolina General Assembly, so we just have to make it consistent. It's really yes. what we're doing. <clears throat> okay. I would like to make a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve the changes to Chapter 110 Business Licenses, Section 110.01 and 110.16, to be consistent with the General Assembly. I second. Great. 
Any other comments, questions? All those in favor, please signify saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thanks, Ron. And thanks to <coughs> all your colleagues for working on this. Okay. Um, <clears throat> next and last under item or item two is two C, <coughs> and this is to schedule a public hearing for Chapter One Fifty Three Zoning Section One Fifty Three Point Zero Seven Three K um, on landscaping requirements and maintenance, and this is to provide long-term buffer protection to property owners adjacent to commercial establishments. And Craig, would you like to? Yes, ma'am, thank you. I hope this is simpler than the budget or the privilege statute. <laughs> the statute. But um, what, what, what it is basically is it's a change to our landscaping ordinance uh, where you have a, a buffer required between incompatible uses. Let's just say there's a restaurant that had to put up a buffer and next door there was a single family dwelling. And, Sometime in the in the course of that restaurant's uh, survival, they decided that they wanted to change their landscaping plans. Well, our, our current ordinance would basically say, you, it, doesn't, it doesn't really give guidance on how you have to put those back. The only guidance it says is you have to put back small plants that have mature in three years. So this this change would say, well, if you do it on your own, and it's not <coughs> there's no fault, of, of, of you, it is the fault of the owner, then you know, they, they decide to make that decision to do it. Then they have to put back mature plants or a fence that would you know, meet that buffering requirement for an incompatible use. And um, the planning board recommended this uh, be adopted on June 17th, and we recommend that it goes to public hearing. And the, the attorney suggested this too, because this is actually was a scenario that, that, um, that had the owner involved and the neighboring property owner involved. And we, we looked at our ordinance and said, we probably need to do something to protect the, the um, provide that buffer on a mature landscape. Great. Thank you. Any questions, comments? And we'd be looking to schedule this public hearing for um, our first meeting in July. Our only meeting in July. That's right. Okay. It's the 14th. Okay. Would like to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion that we schedule a public hearing uh, for uh, July 14th uh, meeting of the uh, Board of Commissioners to uh, <coughs> regarding the uh, zoning amendment to Chapter 153.073K landscaping requirements and maintenance. I'll second. Okay, any other discussion? All those in favor, please signify saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. And last under new business is um, an appointment we have for the Board of Adjustment. Um, this is item 3A. And um, <clears throat> do you want to take this? Yeah. Um, uh, Ron Seidman uh, uh, was appointed to, ful ful uh, to fill an unexpired term uh, <clears throat> as an altered on the board back in uh, February of 13. Um, He's interested in being reappointed to the seat for a three-year period. I'd like to make a motion that uh, we appoint Mr. Seidman <coughs> to the uh, Board of Adjustments for a, uh, a three-year term. I'll second that. Okay. Any comments? Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. And thank you, Ron, if you're watching this later, for continuing to serve. Okay. Um, Next is Commissioner's Agenda. Commissioner Midget, anything today? No, nothing okay. today. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Appleby? Uh, just one thing, uh, there's been some emails circulating around about the uh, disc golf. Um, and I know we don't want to lose track of that and, and everything, um, so I wanted to bring it up today. Mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner Hogan may be having some things to discuss as well. Um, that my only concern at the moment is um, if we potentially use the Fresh Pond site, there's currently a park there that doesn't have any parking. And so if we add a disc golf um, use to that area, if that would be the, the entrance or the access point, which I, I believe that's the only one that would be available on that street, um, that there's no parking at all. Um, and full disclosure, that's also my street. 
Um, so I'm well, very familiar with the fact that there is no available parking in, in around that. So while I'm in full support of a disc golf, I want to make sure that we're, you know, not potentially looking at a site where we don't have ability for the players to park and everything. Yeah. That was it for me. Thank you. None today, thanks. Okay. <clears throat> uh, well, two things. We just uh, um, went through an appointment. Um, I'd like to encourage the public, anybody that's here or listening or sees this later, uh, um, to uh, come to the town and fill out an application to uh, serve on uh, any of our various boards. You can specify which, what board you'd like to serve on, or you could just say you'd like to serve on, or to be asked to, be, uh, to serve on uh, any board, and you can make a decision whether or not you want to do that. Because we're a little bit short on applications right now, and we have created a couple of more committees which need to be staffed. And so far, they are. We're doing good on that. But we'd like to encourage some people a little more to get involved. Um, the other thing regarding the disc golf. Uh, I don't think there would ever be an access put through Ocean Acres. Uh, and, and if it was, it would just be an access. It wouldn't be parking actually in open, uh, Ocean Acres, except maybe for your lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, uh, I, had, I had talked to Debbie and Sean together yesterday, and I've speak, spoken to Greg about it several times this past week, and the emails have been circulating. and. Um, I think where we are right now is that we're going to have a meeting, and I had said in one of the emails we were maybe going to do it in early September, but I think we'll have a meeting sooner than that. And we can, um, I like to consider going ahead with, uh, we have a, a nine hole course sketched out on that property back there, which due to the nature of those kind of courses, they can easily be um, modified or um, even removed we don't want to do that but so whatever um, kind of plan we end up adopting uh, after we see what our consultant surface 678 uh, has for us um, we can just overlay that on what we already have and if there's a conflict with any of the holes or any of the other um, items that we want to put on that property that can that can be adjusted and one of the reasons for doing it uh, is because some of the items that are going to be proposed for back there <coughs> are uh, things that we're not going to do. We're not going to do it all at one time. Um, you know, a boardwalk and a launch, a kayak or canoe launch, maybe years in the future. And there's no point in um, holding up a, a, a project like the disc golf for somewhere down the line if we can do it now. And we do have some money pledged to help us with that. So anyway, in the end, I think the best thing for us to do would be to have a meeting soon, maybe uh, later in July or early uh, August, and do whatever we need to do <coughs> legally. There are some legal things we need to do regarding the volunteers that want to come and help. There can have to be some uh, um, about liability and things like that, you know, people swinging machetes. <laughs> um, so, and one, oh, one other thing before I forget is uh, where uh, Aaron um, McCall from the Nature Conservancy is going to be uh, involved with us. And um, I don't know exactly what he's going to do, but I would imagine he would go through there before anything is done and identify uh, indigenous um, plants or trees that maybe shouldn't be bothered. And maybe if there's some that aren't in indigenous, they can be removed if necessary. But I would think we would really have to um, pay close attention to his guidance back there because the first thing we said when we had our first meeting regarding the bomb track is we want to make a very light footprint. So I think this uh, disc golf is something we can do and we can do it very soon and it will be a light footprint and uh, maybe by sometime later this fall we can be, we'll actually be doing something back there, uh, some kind of recreation. Anybody have any questions on that? Or? A question for you on, the, I mean, we've, we've looked at Nags Head's budget and they have a line item. Is that look like it's going to go through? Or they're going to approve that? They, they have approved They have approved it. Yes, okay. sir. They have a, a plan already sketched out, too, um, 
for uh, the Satterfield landing. Yeah, I believe it's a nine hole. Yes. Nine hole, yeah. And uh, <coughs> I have spoken to the uh, briefly to the uh, now you said town manager, and he personally thought it might be a good idea if we could partner on doing something. Um, we could still do that, but we could still go ahead and do the one over the bomb track because it'll be. Uh, it's not going to cost us anything if it does it would be it'd be minimal and maybe down the line we can get together with nag said and do something at fresh pond there's issues down there too because there's an an agreement we have with the nature conservancy where they sort of oversee that property right. and there's hunting that takes place in there and part of that in the fall the bow hunting for the deer mm -hmm. and there's the rifle or the uh, gun range that's on the next set property, but those things have to be considered too, and the water quality. Got oh, got one of the emails from Jackie Harris. Question: um, Ask about the restroom facilities and how how it might affect the water. We're not going to let anything affect the water. Right. I hope we can move forward on this. It's uh, there's a lot uh, a lot going on right now. I think it's all going to culminate in uh, us making a decision. Within the next month or two. That's great. Excellent. Thanks. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> um, under the the mayor's agenda, I only have one item this this morning, um, and really it's just a, kind of some comments and observations. Um, we all know how busy it's gotten out there already. Um, it'll only get busier over the next few weeks, and um, just want to commend our. Um, public safety, fire, rescue, police, for the work that you guys are doing in Ocean Rescue. They're incredibly busy, um, you know, responding to, to accidents and calls. And of course, we had a, you know, really serious accident last week here involving um, one of our um, town employees and vehicles and um, took a lot of work in that case. If you guys, I'm sure you saw the pictures um, with extrications and uh, anyway, I know you all are very, very busy, and it's such important work that you do, so please share with your staff um, our appreciation for what they do and everyone to keep very vigilant. I know with Ocean Rescue, when they were here introducing the, all the guards to us, they were talking about, you know, it's not just going in and doing the saves, it's also trying to prevent things, um, and that's important. We've been on the beach um, a number of times recently. Actually, they even came over. Um, my youngest was playing in a, a hole that they had dug, and they had dug a little canal, well, not a canal, um, a trench, so the water would fill up when the waves come, came in, and the lifeguard came over and was like, ma'am, make sure he's not sitting in that when the wave comes in, you know, because it could fill up with him in there, and I just thought, he didn't, I'm sure, know who I was, and it didn't matter, because he was giving me the same message that he would any parent that was down there, which was very appropriate, you know, I ended up moving my chair because I was sitting a little bit in front of him and once he said that I was like you know I really he can swim fortunately but still you can get carried away but I thought it was just a great message um, that they are being um, attentive and vigilant not just what's happening in the water but they are just in, and it's a preventative measure um, so please continue to encourage them to do the great work that they're doing I know we've had multiple saves already um, so some really great staff out there working really, really hard, doing such important jobs. So thanks to all of them, um, and hopefully we'll continue to have a good summer. And, uh, yeah, I might, um, since you mentioned that, I, 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 some of you may have heard on the news about the person that died down on Hatteras Island that dug the hole and it caved in on him. And this is the second time that's happened. Yeah, it happened some years ago. Two guys were, were down there, down around, the, somewhere down there around the point, I think, they were digging. And these guys had two holes, apparently, and they were trying to dig a tunnel between them. And I see people digging holes on the beach, makes me nervous. You know? Even, they said the hole was like four feet deep. So it's not, you know, it's not like you stand in and get covered up. I mean, you can be laying down there like these guys were trying to crawl through a tunnel. And it's just very frightening to me. I, Gives me the willies, but <laughs> so don't dig big holes and get in them on the beach, please. Okay, um, Debbie, town manager's agenda. Um, yes, ma'am. I'd like again to thank um, the department heads and all of their staff for the, the work they did on the budget. Um, really did an awesome job, and Beverly 
um, you particularly, thank you very much. And more importantly, I'd like to thank the board for adopting the budget today, and we look forward to carrying out your, your budget now. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Town Attorney's Agenda? I don't have anything for you today. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Um, Debbie, the consent agenda? Yes, ma'am. Consent agenda, um, two items. The first minutes for the June meetings, the June 9th and the June 16th. 2014. And second, I, I want to just give a little bit of explanation about this um, budget transfer. This is it's the first one that um, I don't know that any of you have seen one of these. If you recall back in the budget ordinance, it allows um, for the department head and the manager to make transfers within specific departments. For example, in the administration department, um, Sean is the department head over administration and building and grounds. In the finance department, Beverly is the department head for finance, MIS, and fleet maintenance. Um, animal control, um, Chief Britt is the department head for the police and, and um, animal control, excuse me, I mean police department. Um, in the fire department, um, Chief Tilly, the station 14, and Ocean Rescue. Steve Albright um, is the department head in public works streets and in public works solid waste and um, also Steve is the department head for water administration the water plant and the water system so within those departments we can make transfers within those divisions but the ordinance does re require that at the next meeting I report those transfers to you and that is what you have here um, as you recall, normally when I report, a, it's a budget amendment, and I'm recommending it, and you approve it. What this is, is um, Steve recommended it, I approved it, and I'm simply reporting it to you. Um, the reason for this was we had um, a retiree that we did not know about when we were doing the, um, they hadn't decided they were going to retire when we were doing the budget. What we'd like to do is, if we know that's coming, then we budget those funds because the retiree insurance is more than a regular employee. What this, what this has done is simply moved um, salary and benefits from that employee um, retirement to fund his um, additional health insurance. So this, this is simply a reporting matter. And with that, I would recommend um, approval of the consent agenda. And, and Debbie, for further clarification on that item, it's simply a reporting matter, and it also is simply moving money from one, is it from, well, a series of items to one other item, as, as shown on this if, budget if, request. Let's say, for example, that, um, let's say, for example, that the, this money, see, the, um, the salaries are in, the salaries were in the, um, in the division. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is systems. Plant, thank you. So the, the salaries were in the the salaries were in the in the um, plant line item, but the the insurance mm -hmm. is in the administration. Uh -huh. right. Okay, right. So um, it's moving it from there. So it, it the moved other. it moved salary money and in each little breakdown there back into the administration health insurance to cover the additional cost. Okay. If this if this money had been in, let's say for example we did the insurance in the division, then this it wouldn't be, be anything exactly. we would take to you. Mm -hmm. But since we're moving it from one division to another, um, the ordinance and statutes require that I report it right. to you. Sure. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Okay. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Any other comments? All those in favor, please signify saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Um, now we're at the second time that's set aside during our meeting for public comment. Is there anyone that wishes to speak at this public comment time? Okay. Last year. All right. Um, then we're pretty much wrapped up this morning. Any anything else from the board? Okay. A motion to adjourn is in order. I make that motion to adjourn. Second. Thanks. All those in favor, please signify saying aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for being here this morning.